end time preachers, Christians and preaching. End time preachers, Christians and preaching. You see, people are very interested in prophecy. Whenever a pastor will preach about prophecy, Christians will be very, very intent to listen because we are just curious of what will happen in the future. It is something that is uh, ingrained in each and every one of us. So if I'm going to announce that today I'm going to preach and expose to you who is the Antichrist, I believe that many people will show, out, show up out of curiosity to know who the Antichrist will be. But if during the course of the sermon I preach about sin, then I believe that I'm going to lose the crowd as fast that as I gain them when I announce that I'm going to preach about exposing the Antichrist. So this morning, what I'm going to do is to be speaking about a prophet event. It is an event not prophetic that I'm going to tell you what may happen in the future, but I will tell you what will happen in the future after it was already written in the Word of God. So it is not foretelling, it is going to be foretelling. I will tell you what is already written in the Word of God. The prophecy that I am going to be preaching about to you today will not draw a crowd, but it will draw us closer to God. And I would rather that we be drawn closer to God than for us to draw a crowd just for the sake of you see, lifting up our name as a church. In our midst, we care about Jesus. In our midst, we lift the Lord Jesus. In our midst, it is all about Jesus. Amen. And that is what we want to do as a church. And as I preach today about the end time preachers, Christians and preaching, I hope and I pray that you will open your minds so that we can see why are these things happening and why these things are happening right in our time. Allow me, number one, to preach about end-time preachers. End-time preachers. Paul told Timothy, under the inspiration of, the, of God, what type of preacher he should be and why he should be that type of preacher. So, during the end times, there is a kind of preacher that God wanted the preachers to be. Because sad to see is that there are so many preachers today that are not ready for the end time. They are not ready to preach the word of God. They are not ready to preach the whole counsel of God. They are not pre uh, ready to preach something that will glorify the name of God. Many preachers today are preaching about things that they want to preach, not about the things that God wanted them to preach. So, he told Timothy, under the inspiration of God, what type of preacher he should be and why he should be the type of a preacher. Paul told Timothy, preach the word. Be instant in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. So, under this number one, the first thing a good preacher does is preach the word. Amen. The first thing that a good preacher does is to preach the word. A preacher is to proclaim the word of God. Look at Acts 17, verse number 2. Acts chapter 17 and verse number 2. These verses will put a Calvinist in a position that will prove that they are wrong when they say that God has already settled the issue of those people who are going to be saved and those people that are elected to go to hell. Paul says, and Paul as his manner was, this is what the apostle Paul always did. Every time Paul uh, do this, this in this manner, he's going to do it. Paul as his manner was, went in unto them and three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the scriptures. So you see, whenever Paul preached, it is about the word of God. Whenever Paul opened his mind, a mouth, it is about 
the Word of God. Whenever Paul talks to people, he talks about the Word of God. He's not giving his opinion. He's not giving his preference. He's not giving his take. But whenever the Apostle Paul goes to people and opens his mouth, he will preach about the Word of God. And that is what we need today, the preaching of the Word of God. Notice Paul says he reasoned with them. If Paul knew that God has already settled those who will go to heaven and those who will go to hell, why does Paul have to reason with them? Paano ka makikipagkatwiran eh? Pa-impyerno na yun, wala ka nang magagawa. How can you reason with a person that is already elected to go to heaven? So ladies and gentlemen, our salvation is according to our acceptance or rejection of the word of God. Amen. There is a free will, though not absolute, it was given to us by God. Even God acknowledged this. Look at Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 1, verse number 18. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18. Come now and let us reason together. You see, God is inviting us. He says, come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. What did God say? Let us reason. Let us talk. I will explain to you. I will make you understand. I am going to convince you. I am going to put that faith in your heart if you listen to my reason. And what is that? He says, though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Amen? Your sins can be forgiven. Listen to my reason. Listen to what I'm going to tell you. He says, Though they be as scarlet, they should be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. So it is God who said that we need to give them reason. That's why God admonished Christians to always give an answer for the reason of our hope. Amen. We must tell them why. We must tell them how. We must tell them the reason why so that they can understand. If they will understand, they will repent of their sins. If they will repent, they will accept Jesus. And if they receive Jesus, they will be forgiven and they will have eternal life. Amen. So that is the kind of preacher that we need today. A preacher who will preach the word of God. You see, many preachers spend most of their sermons giving illustrations. Let me illustrate. And they will go on and on and on and on and on and finish the message by their illustration. Illustration only helps the preaching, but that is not the meat of the sermon. Illustration must only be a small part of the preaching and it is just an ornament to the preaching. It is just a window, but the main meat the main door is the preaching of the word of God. Illustration will not do it, but the word of God will do it. So most people, most preachers today are giving illustrations after illustrations and they bank on their illustration so that people will understand the word of God. Ladies and gentlemen, listen to me. Even without illustrations, we can understand the word of God. Even without illustration, God can work in our hearts. Next, many preachers tell great stories. Again, stories are only a sermon helper, but they are not the meat of the message. But if you will go to YouTube, if you will look or listen to the, preaching, to the preachers of today and to their preaching, you will see that most of their preachings are about stories. The story of their lives. Things that they have experienced. Things that they believe the Lord had done in their lives. And they are going to go on and on and on telling us their achievements. Ladies and gentlemen, the people in the New Testament says, we would see Jesus. They're not interested in me. They're not interested in you. The reason why people are here, they're interested in Jesus and the Word of God. And sometimes we bore them with the story of our lives. 
And sometimes we'll tell them all of the achievements that we have achieved, not even understanding that without Jesus we can do nothing. It is only because of God. And without God, there is nothing that we can accomplish in this life. The work of God is accomplished by the power of God. Not by me, not by you, not by any of us. And sad to say, sad to say, the popular preachers, even in the Philippines, are storytellers. They are not preachers. They will tell you stories after stories. They will defend why they are in politics. They will defend why they are doing this and doing that. They will tell you their achievement. They will show you the beautiful building. They will show you the escalator. They will show you the elevator. They will show you the calculator. They will show you everything in order to impress you. Ladies and gentlemen, we may be impressed by everything that they have done, but only Jesus can impress in our heart that our sins must be forgiven, and it will only happen if we will repent and accept Him as our Lord and Savior. You may be impressed, and you will go to hell. We may uh, applaud them and go to hell. We may be amazed of the things that were accomplished through their lives and still go to hell. Why? It is, the only, it is only the word of God that can do the job. Not my words, not your words, not their words, and not the words of any other preacher. But sad to say, as I have told you a while ago, that many preachers tell great stories and that made most of their sermon. Listen, it is the word, work, uh, the word of God that will do the work of God. Look at Hebrews chapter 4 verse number 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful. Quick means alive. It does not mean fast. It is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. It will get through. You will understand it. It will make you uh, realize. It will make you feel where you are at in the sight of God. And of the joints and marrow. And is a discerner. That's why when you hear about, when you listen to the preaching of the word of God, you, 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 you will uh, wonder who told pastor. Why did he know? It is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Only the word of God can show you your real intention if it is right or wrong. Only the word of God can tell you if your reason is biblical or if it is only personal. And mind you, ladies and gentlemen, most of the reasons uh, that we do in our lives are personal reasons, not even biblical reasons. Why? Because we don't care about looking at the word of God regarding our decisions. As I said a while ago, when you make a decision, you go to your emotion. You do not go to the facts of the word of God. You do not go to the fact that God is dealing with you and God's calling is between you and God. Your mother has nothing to do with it. Your father has nothing to do with it. Your pastor has nothing to do with it. Your prince has nothing to do with it. You have nothing to do with it. It is all about God. Because it's God who's calling, not you. Not me. Not anybody else. For the gifts and the calling of God are without repentance. That is why you need to be sure. Because that calling will never change. And if you will not heed the call of God, you will be out of his call for the rest of your life. Amen? Because it will change. So if you're not there, you're not there. Amen? If you're not in the will of God, then you're not in God's will. And because God's will never changes, you will spend all of your life living outside the will of God. So that's why we need to ascertain what the will of God is. Okay, as heralds proclaim the will of their princes and dukes and kings, preachers should be the same way. They will only read what is written with a loud voice 
without any compromise, without adding or taking away anything from the message, that should be the kind of preacher that we ought to be preaching the Word of God. Amen? So Paul says, I want you to become a preacher of the Word of God. He told Timothy, he says, preach the Word of God, be instant. Be instant. It means he has to be in the Word all the time. Meaning to say, like a Boy Scout, always ready. If somebody will ask you, Brother Wilson, come up here and preach the Word of God without hesitation, you will stand up because you have something to preach. Why? You know the Word of God. You see, the reason why others cannot stand up and preach is because they need messages, they need outlines, they need all of these things before they can preach the Word of God. As long as you have the Bible, you have something to preach. You see, that's why Paul says, be instant if you are deep into the Word of God. It is nothing to you if you will be asked to stand up and preach the Word of God. Because no matter where you open it, there is a message that the Holy Spirit will show the people. Regarding God's Word. That's why that's what I like about Pastor Jesse. He said, as long as the Bible is here, I can preach. Why? Because we're here to preach the Bible. What Pastor, if I do not know what to say, simply read it and that will do it. Amen? They said, preach about salvation. You read John, 3, John chapter 3, the whole chapter, and you already preach about salvation. It's there, born again. It's there, born of the Spirit. It's there, receiving Jesus as your Savior. It is there, there is a condemnation. And then there is a, a justification. If you will only be born of the Spirit and of the water, then God will save you. It's there. As long as we have the Word of God, we can preach the Word of God. Amen? He says, He has to be ready to teach the Word all the time. That's why it is very frustrating when you are asked to preach and you will say, I'm sorry, I am not ready. Preacher, kapa. I'm a preacher. Preach. No, I'm not ready. I'm a cook, cook, no, I'm not ready. I'm a police, you arrest, no, I'm not ready. No, if you are a preacher, then your life must be characterized by preaching. Amen. God called me to be a preacher, and then you're not ready, so you're not ready for the call of God. Amen? So sometimes we do not know what we're saying. Sometimes we do not understand what we're saying. Paul told Timothy, he has to be ready to teach the word all the time. That's why he said, be instant. Instant, like instant coffee. No need to brew. Amen? No need to brew. You only need that water. You have instant coffee. Instant children. No need to go to the honeymoon. You already have children. Instant money. No need to work. You already have money. Be instant in preaching. You must always be ready to preach the word of God. Amen? And it says here, in season and out of season, he is to be preaching the word. Preach it. If it is convenient, preach it. If it is inconvenient, preach it. If it is popular, preach it. If it is not popular, preach it. Preach it. If they will accept it, preach it. If they will reject it, preach it. If they are friendly, preach it. If they are hostile, preach it. If they will applaud you, preach it. If they will boo you, preach it. We must always be ready to preach the word of God. Why? That's the kind of preacher that we need. In season and out of season. In church or out of the church. Wherever you are. If it comes to the point of preaching the word of God, then you need to be instant in season and out of season. Amen? How do we preach it? Reprove. Paul says to Timothy, reprove. What is reproving? Express disapproval about an action, a conduct, a belief to censure, to condemn. Oh, listen, many, many times 
the complaints of the members are this. Why is pastor using the pulpit and becoming very personal? How can reproving be not personal? Mm, explain that to me. How can you say you're wrong? You are wrong! But not you. This is not personal. Preaching is always personal. There is no such thing as an impersonal preaching. In preaching, if we are disobeying God, if we are committing sin, we are going to be hit by the preaching, including the person preaching the word of God. And our attitude should be of submission, yielding, accepting the truth. We do not have to be a, uh, a rebellious person who is ready to strike back whenever we are struck by the word of God. If it is painful, thank God, because you're still alive. Because only a dead person will not be able to feel pain anymore if their sins are being exposed in the preaching of God's word. No one likes being condemned for his actions or belief. But if a preacher will not reprove, he is like a parent that will only feed his children sweets, candies, chocolates, and junk food. The children are happy, but it will destroy them. That's why preachers like Joel Austin are very popular. Because they feed you with junk food. They feed you with sweets. They feed you with, with the chocolates. They will tell you, oh, you are the best. They will tell you, oh, you, you are a, a God wanted you to be happy. Whatever uh, that will make you happy, God will allow it. God wants you to be rich. God wants you to be beautiful. God wants you to be this and that. And then I will collect all of your money. And then he will watch the concert of Lady Gaga. That's the latest. By the way, Joel Austin and Victoria watch the concert of Lady Gaga. Why? They want you to feel good about yourself. But if you are going to read the word of God, you will become uncomfortable. You will become inconvenient and you will see how short we fall from the standard of God. That is the purpose of the word of God. Why? Because nobody is perfect. Therefore, we are going to be the subject of the word of God. Especially when the word of God is exposing sin in the life of a person. But sometimes there are preachers who reprove much. Even though their reproof is not according to the word of God. Their reproof is only according to their own interpretation or preference without the full backing of the word of God. They will reprove you about things that is not even clear from God's word. Whenever we reprove, ladies and gentlemen, preachers, we must reprove based on the word of God. Amen? Next, he says, rebuke. Rebuke. To rebuke means to reprove or reprimand severely. So rebuking is stronger than reproving. First, the preacher will reprove you, and then later on, if you persist, you will be rebuked. Medyo malumanay muna ng konti. Pagkatapos, matindi na. Find fault, censure, condemn an action or a belief. As I've said, rebuke and reprove are very alike. They both have someone in authority telling you to stop doing and believing what is wrong using the final authority, the Word of God. Hindi ka i-rebuke lang kasi gusto ka i-rebuke. Kapatid, mali yan. Bakit po? Asan po sa Bible? Wala yung Bible, Bible. Mali yan, mali yan, sinabi ko. I am the final authority, no? 
You cannot rebuke a person without showing him from the word of God that he is wrong. Why? Because then you are wrong. And you have no authority to rebuke anybody without your rebuke basing on the word of God. So you will be rebuked because you disobey something that is clearly written in this book. Like for example, you, you have a, uh, an unbelieving boyfriend or girlfriend. You will be rebuked according to the word of God. Why are you rebuking me, pastor? Why are you telling me not to do this? Because according to the word of God, be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. So the person has authority. Why? Because he is rebuking you according to the final authority, which is the word of God. So that's why without the word of God, be silent. Without the word of God, it is only your preference. It is not how God wanted you to conduct yourself in rebuking people by the word of God. You see, if you will notice, the preacher is given twice as much negative as positives. Mas, mas maraming negative. Kesa sa positive. Ang sabi, rebuke. Reprove, rebuke. Exhort is towards. That is also negative. Mas maraming negative. Why? Because negative preaching leads to a positive living. If you are going to preach against sin, it will lead to a clean life. The negative is you condemn sin and the positive will result in a changed life. Amen? If sin is not being preached in the church, then sin will persist in a church and in the life of that person. Hindi mo naman, ano eh? Ni-rebuke eh. Hindi mo naman sinabi. Positive preaching leads to negative lives. Why? Positive. Always telling them the good things about them and not condemning sin. Positive. Always exhorting without rebuking. Negative. Unchanged lives. Amen? Those who are attending the church of, of uh, being led by Joel Austin and all of these prosperity gospel people, they don't care about the lives of people. They only care about their money. So as long as you give your money, you can leave your sin. And it will not affect the ministry. Why? The ministry is about the money. It is not about the lives of the people that are worshiping God. Next, exhort. Reprove. Rebuke. Exhort. Pastor, what does exhort mean? It means to admonish earnestly, to urge. What When Paul says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, he is exhorting them. He is urging them. Urging them to do something that is praiseworthy conduct. Urging them to do something, uh, to do a course of action that will result in the glory of God. So what does a preacher need to do? The preacher will need to urge the people to live right. The preacher will have to urge the people to talk right. The preacher will have to urge the people to dress right. The people will need to urge the people to give right. The preacher will have to urge the people to be a right family. And the preacher will need to urge the people to do everything that is right in their lives. Amen? That is what a preacher needs to do. Urge us to do what is right. Do right. Though the stars fall, do right. Malina lyrics, do right. Do right by you. Do right. No matter what happened, do right. That is what we need to urge our people. Amen? And listen, all of these things must be done with long-suffering. Amen? You know, sometimes the, the, the pastor can get weary. The pastors can get discouraged, disappointed. Sometimes the preacher will be burned out. Why? Because somehow it does not yet dawn on us that all the things that we need to do in a church must be done with long suffering. Long suffering simply means suffer long. Amen. 
like the parents the parents will teach their children from the time that they can understand until the time that the parents cannot stand anymore there is no end that's why you, that's why uh, children will say will you please stop that you've been telling me that since I was a child yes because all of these things must be done with long suffering pastor why do you preach about the same thing again and again and again and again why because you do the same thing again and again and again and again with long suffering that's why suffering long is a part of the work of the pastor so once you realize this once you realize this you will understand that no matter what you are facing is a part of the job when you said yes to God when you called you in the ministry kaya walang pastor na nagkukwit amen sinabi na nga dito hindi naman madali eh Sino ba? Sino ba nagsabi sa iyo na madali magpastor? Who told you that it's easy to, to, to pastor a church? Who told you it's easy to teach people? Nobody told you that. Even God, He says, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself. When you say, I am tired. When you say, I've had it. I've had enough. When you say all of these things, you are thinking of yourself. Deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow me in the airy stance, meaning to say, keep on following no matter how heavy that cross may become. Because most of the times we said yes to God without understanding the details of the job description that is given to us by God. You see, the Apostle Paul says, I finished my course. Amen? That is God's will. God will not ask you to stop. Mid-range race. He will not ask you to change horse. In the middle of the race. God called me to be a pastor. God called me to be a preacher. And then at the middle of the race you will say. Oh I'm just going to be a deacon. No. The gifts. And the calling of God. Pastor. What are you going to do. When it becomes very hard and unbearable. What you're going to do. Keep on keeping on suffer longer and longer and longer and longer why because time will come that the suffering will stop when we all get to heaven amen it will stop it will not be forever and that is your calling you finish it you don't ask somebody to can you carry my cross no they have their own cross Long suffering. All reproving, rebuking, and exhorting is to be done with all long suffering. 2 Timothy 2 24. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse number 24. This is what the Bible says about long suffering. Doing the ministry in that way, and the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, up to teach, patient. Can we continue, please? In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves, if God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. And 2 Timothy 3:10. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse number 10. Be the but thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long suffering, charity. Patience, don't you know that without long suffering, the apostle Paul should have given up? He has all the reason to quit. 
You establish a church, God uses to establish a church, and the church will turn against you. Will even question your authority, not realizing that when they question your authority, they're questioning their existence. Amen? Church sa Corinth, quinesque ng authority ni Paul. Eh si Paul ang nag-establish sa kanila. So kung walang authority si Paul, peki sila. Kaya nga sabi, in meekness, instructing those who oppose themselves, the Corinthian people does not even realize they're opposing their own selves when they are questioning the authority of the Apostle Paul. But in spite of all of these things, Paul kept on going. Pastor, mahirap na eh. Nagkakasakit na ako. Pinagbabato siya. Kalalaki kong tao, Pastor, hirap na hirap na ako, nagme-mens na ako. Ganun na yung stress na dinadanas ko. Nagpalutang-lutang siya sa tubig. Nung nakaligtas, pagdating sa tampalan, meron pang ahas. Na pumulupot sa kanya, sabi niya, talagang masama tong taong to. E nung nilagay sa shinyek niya dun sa fire, na wala yung ahas, na, na umalis yung ahas. Name it! Do we have a preacher today who suffered as much as the Apostle Paul and yet the Apostle Paul in spite of suffering all of these things did not quit? But he gave that integrity in the calling that God has given him. Do you know why? Because even at the onset of his calling he told Ananias tell him what he will suffer for my name's sake. Same thing with us. Actually, ang papalad nga natin, wala mang masyadong hirap nga ang ministry ngayon. Yung pagta-travel, andali, information, ang dami, ang mga tao, kahit na sabihin natin, ang tao, masama, masama talaga, totoo yung kaya lang, mild-mannered compared dun sa mga naunang barbaro. Kaya sabi niya, barbarians, Mas, mas mild manner, galit na nga sa'yo, nakangiti pa eh. Noong paggalit sa'yo, nakaangil eh. You see, Paul experienced all of these things, but he kept on keeping on. Why? Because it was a calling given to him by God. And he is a preacher that must suffer long. Amen? What? Reprove, rebuke, exhort with long suffering and Doctrine. Ayan. Doctrine. All reproving, rebuking, and exhorting is to be done with doctrine. Listen, God gave us His word for doctrine. 2 Timothy 3.16 All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine. What is the primary reason why God gave us His word? Doctrine. Doctrine. And yet, this is the most hated part in Christianity today. This is the most boring part in Christianity today. They don't like this anymore. Why? Because let us look at the end time Christians. Let us look, number two, at the end time Christians. Who are the end time Christians? It says here, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own loss shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. So Paul told Timothy, this is the kind of preacher that we need in the end times. Why? Because these are the kind of Christians that you will see in the end times. What kind of Christian? Look at 2 Timothy 3, 1 to 6. Before we go on, let's read this. For 2 Timothy 3, 1 to 6. This know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. Amen? Are we in the last days? Are we in perilous times? For men shall be lovers of their own selves. That's the reason why Avon is so successful today. And Maybelline 
and max factor. And all of these beauty products, why? Because <laughs> men shall be lovers of their own selves. Oh, don't react, just listen. <laughs> Covetous. Amen? I want what they have. Boasters, my. Proud. Blasphemers, disobedient to parents. Amen? Unthankful. Pero mo sabihin, hindi biblika lang utang na loob. Anong klaseng isip meron ka? It is not biblical to be grateful. So iniligtas ka ni Kristo. Eh ano? Ba't akong papasalamat sa'yo kung niligtas mo ako? Ba't di mo kanyang sa impyerno na kakaya naman sa'yo? How can you ever say that? Eh, tinulungan mo ako. Katungkulan mo yun. Ba't ako dapat magpasalamat? Tumulong ka, huwag ka mangingin ng kapalit. Oo, pag tumulong ka, huwag ka mangingin ng kapalit. Pero ikaw naman na tinulungan, dapat maroon ka magpasalamat. Amen? Unthankful, unholy. Number three. Without natural affection. Yung mga LGBT, hindi na natural ang affection nila. Lalaki sa lalaki, babae sa babae. Tao sa hayop. I'm in love with my horse. It's not can grow. Tao sa hayop. Truth breakers. Ngayon, pinakamaraming agreement na hindi nangyayari. False accusers, incontinent. Kung saan saan nakatira? Kahit wala ng continent, tinitiram pa. Fierce, despises of those that are good. They despise. Traitors, heavy, high-minded, lovers of pleasures, more than lovers of God. That's why they will choose pleasure than God. Five. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. That's why it is true that in our time, there are many church members that may not be saved. They only have the form, but not the substance. They deny the power thereof. In verse number 6, it says here, For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with diverse lusts. So this is the characteristic of the Christians that will be living in the last days. What are these characteristics? Number one, they will not endure sound doctrine. From this, listen, from this, we need to understand that sound doctrine has to be endured. What does it mean to endure? To undergo? To bear? To experience pain, hardship, without giving way. So it is not easy to listen to doctrine you need to endure. Because it is not popular. The popular preaching are preaching that says something good about people. Popular preachings are preachings that will make you good, feel good about yourself, while doctrinal preaching will tell us that we are nothing without God and it must be endured. Tinitiis ang doctrine. Kinakarga na hindi mo ikinokompromise. Ganun yun. Kaya ang mga sikat na preacher ngayon, yung mga preacher na e-entertain ka pag ikaw ay umaten sa kanilang mga simbahan. Yung, sa music pa lang, bibigyan ka na ng gusto mo. Sa announcement pa lang, bibigay na yung gusto mo. Lalo na pagdating sa preaching, ibibigay kung ano yung gusto mong marinig, 
yung pinupuri ka, yung tinataas ka, yung kinikiliti ka, yung pinopola ka, yung, yung sinasabihan ka ng hindi totoo, basta't maramdaman mo lang, okay ako! Kaya okay ang church na ito. I remember, before, umabot kami rito ng, ito pa lang yung church nun, ito, ito. Puno, halos wala ng lugar. Daming umaaten. Dapat mo ba si Sir Jay? Daming dumarating. And nag-preach ako about living, yung live-in. Nag-preach ako about yung mga talagang ano na, tinuturo ng Bible. Abay, nag-alisan. Nag-preach ako ng about long hair. Umalis. Nag-preach ako ng about paghihikaw sa mga lalaki. Nawala, nag-preach ako about pag-inom, paninigarilyo, pagbibisyo. Nawala lahat, pero may sumalo. Kita-kita sila ron. At kapag tapos ang service nila, inuman. Sound doctrine must be endured. Kaya, people who does not love the truth will not remain in a church that is preaching sound doctrine. But pastor, don't they preach doctrine. Yes, they teach doctrine, but not sound. Not sound, like they preach the doctrine of first fruits offering. Pastor, that's biblical. Yes, it's in the Bible, in that sense, yes. But it is not for the church, it is not for the local church, it is not for the Christian, and it is definitely not one month salary, and definitely hindi hulugan buwan-buwan. It's a doctrine, but it is not sound. Pastor, pag pinipitch nila, walang sound. Plying kiking kita eh. Ibig sabihin ng hindi sound, hindi ayon sa katotohanan ng salita ng Diyos. Hindi ganun. They have doctrine but not sound. They teach about non-transparent membership. Yes, it is a doctrine but it is not sound. Why? Because the Apostle Paul transferred this membership at least two to three times in the Bible and they will still reject it. Why? That is how they want to understand it for self-consumption. Alam nyo, missions during those times, missionaries are sent in places where the gospel is not preached. But the mission of modern time Christianity today is they will send a missionary where their members are so that the tithes and the offering will flow towards the home church. Their mission is about greed. Their mission is about money. Yes, it is a doctrine, but it is not sound. Because a sound doctrine will pass the test of the whole word of God. No matter how you scrutinize it, it is going to pass the test of the word of God. No matter how you test the spirit, it will be according to the word of God. That's what's happening today. They have doctrine, but they are not sound. Why do we need to endure sound doctrine? Because sound doctrine is about hell. It is about sin. It is about vices. It is about neglect. It is about fornication. It is about grief. It is about uh, abuse of authority. It is about something that people are doing but is not according to the word of God. It is about theocracy according to their own understanding. That's why in our Baptist distinctive, we put their congregational form of government. Why? In our time today, they use the word theocracy in order to put God there, but the God in theocracy is actually them. Not the true and the living God because they are the ones who decide for the church entirely. There was a post uh, that we're following. The post is, uh, the question is, what if the pastor is nilustay all the money of the church. 
First question, why can a pastor do that? Number one, because there is no transparency and there is no check and balance. How can the pastor use the money without the church knowing about it? Any expenditure must be with the agreement of the whole body. Why? The pastor is the overseer. He is not the decision maker. The pastor oversees the decision made by the church. Do you understand that? Oversee. Minamanis niyang alin yung napagkasunduan na ng simbahan. No, but today, the pastor will choose whom you are going to marry. My. I know I don't like that girl for you. Find another one. Oh, I do not like that man for you. Find another one. Who are you to choose for me? Hindi naman ikaw magkikisama ako. Now, if that person is unbeliever, you, broke, you rebuke me according to the authority of the Word of God. And I can accept that. And if I will not accept, I am at fault. But if what I'm doing is according to the Word of God, and it is only your preference, then please don't do that to me. There is a pastor. He did not marry his own son because he doesn't like the prospective wife of the son. So he said, I cannot marry you. You go out from this church. The lady is a Christian. Good standing. The only problem is the pastor or the father pastor wants somebody else to be married to his son. That is the kind of theocracy that they're teaching. And there was even a church that you cannot do your own style of hair. He will tell you how to part your hair. I said, if there is a calvo, let's see how can you teach him to part his hair. Why it's all departed. Pastor, sana ng hati. How will I part my hair? They already departed. And they will tell you the color of polo that you have to wear. And they will tell you that you need to have a necktie. Even when you're wearing barong, of course not. They will tell you what to do. Why? Because they believe in theocracy that the pastor is the sole authority in the church. Why? They even say, you respect me more than your parents because the Bible says, render unto them double honor. That is not sound doctrine. That is a doctrine. And in 1 Timothy, there is what we call the doctrine of the devil. That's it. It is not the doctrine from the word of God. Amen? We need to endure sound doctrine. Pag sound doctrine, di na makatiis. At pag ang preaching din, tumatagal, di na makatiis. Nawawala na ng energy yung mga nakikinig. Buti na lang yung nagpipreach, hindi pa nawawala ng energy. Kanina, boy na boy kayo. <laughs> Ngayon, iba natin inyo. <laughs> Ganun talaga. Kasi nag-aaral tayo ng sound doctrine. Amen? Kaya magalala, hindi naman ito magdadalawang oras. Pero kahapon pala, mahaba, ano? Hindi ko napansin, no? tinignan ko na lang sa, ano, sa YouTube ba? Naka one hour and 20 minutes pala tayo. Praise God. Amen? Ang dain nating narinig. You see, cults have false doctrine that is based on scripture taken out of context. These are cults, but sad to say, even Baptists today are doing the same thing. Who are these cults, Pastor? Kipuloy. Imagine this, the owner of the earth and yet he is accused of begging around the world. Inutusan ko ba kayong manglimos? Kanya pa. Ako ba nag-utos sa inyo? Naglimos kayo nang hindi ko naman sinabi. Pero bibigay sa kanya pero tanggap niya. Anong pangalan niya? Apollos, di ba? Alisin mo yung key. 
alisin mo yung polos abuloy ayun ang pangalan niya kahit dito sa kampo dyan na mamalim mo siya mga yan pag sinita mo magagalit pa at hanggang ngayon ang pinangihingi ng tulong yung Yolanda kaya si Yolanda mahal na mahal ni ano yan eh hindi ko buloy yan laki niya nang kinita niya dyan eh they teach doctrine but they are false based on scripture taken out of context and modern Christianity says we do not care about doctrines anymore what we need to do is to please people so that they will be pleased to receive Jesus that's why we entertain them that's why we give them what they want so that they will do what we want and listen to me I call that deception it is not preaching the truth not only that you know they will reject the preacher of sound doctrine they rejected Jesus because he preached the truth look at John 8.45 John 8.45 and because I tell you the truth you believe me not you see, when you tell them the truth, they won't believe you. You tell them a lie, they will believe you. You tell all the ladies they're beautiful, they will believe you. You tell them the truth that they're ugly, they will not believe you. Yes, you know what will happen if you will do that? This is what is going to happen to you if you will tell them what is the truth. Galatians chapter 4, 16. This is what will happen. Am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? Kaaway mo na ba ako? Dahil sinabi ko talaga kung ano itsura mo? Kaaway mo na ba ako? Dahil sinabi ko talaga kung ano ugali mo? Kaaway mo na ba ako? Dahil sinabi ko talaga kung ano timbang mo at ang edad mo? No! No! We need to appreciate the truth. Amen? Am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? Why? This Galatian people got angry at the apostle Paul because Paul told them that they have been bewitched. Paul told them that they are fools. Paul told them that they are drifting away from the truth of the word of God. And Paul says, am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? And so many pastors will become your enemy if you will tell them the truth. That's why the truth is not popular anymore. What will they do? They will follow their own lust. They will find someone that satisfies the flesh instead of a preacher that condemns their fleshly desires. So they will jump from one church to another until they find somebody who will tickle their fancy. And when that pastor says something against them, they will again find somebody. Why? Because they do not want preachers that preach doctrine. Next, they will get teacher they want. They will heap unto themselves teachers with teaching ears. What do you mean heap? They will gather teachers. After teachers, after teachers, after teachers until they found somebody that will make them satisfy that will satisfy them oh I like this person because he always uh, you know, say something good about you I like this person because he always tell jokes I like this, like this person because you will. Uh, there is always a light moment when he is the one who is preaching but I don't like that preacher he is loud mouth and he is going to tell you negative things about yourself which is, by the way, the truth. And which is sound doctrine. So they will need many pastors to fill their ears with what they want to hear. Notice, they will what? Heap teachers, not preachers. Because what we need primarily are preachers, not teachers. We need teachers, yes, because they have their part. But in proclaiming the word of God, what we need are preachers. Amen? And then you know what will happen? They will want preachers that will not reprove, rebuke, exhort with long suffering, but they want teachers that will tell them things 
but not touch their sin. So what will be the result? They will have itching ears. Why? They want to be amused. They want to be flattered. They want new things like those people at Athens when they heard that Paul is there and he's saying something new. They said, uh, we will hear him because he is telling us something that is new. It is not new. Actually, look at Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 16. Don't worry, in about 10 to 15 minutes, we'll be finished. Jeremiah 6, 16. Thus saith the Lord, Stand ye in the ways, and see, and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way? And walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, We will not walk therein generation gap this is what is happening now we are in the new age and we must also improve with the time listen god is the same yesterday today and tomorrow and what is not broken should not be fixed what's what's wrong with the old path what is wrong with the old time religion what is wrong with the old time preaching it will always endure forever. They want to be entertained. That's why many churches today have their worship entertainment teams. Like sing, while they're singing, people here dancing and doing all sorts of things. There are men and women who are, who are uh, leading the songs and they are jumping and they are urging the people to sing and they are doing a, a, a and they will split they will split and all of these things why? they entertain people they want people to be entertained. Why? So that they will stay. Modern churches are based on entertaining the Christian instead of reproving, rebuking, and exhorting with doctrine. That is what's happening. They will be like the people of Athens, as I've said a while ago. Look at Acts 17, 19. Acts 17, 19. And they took him and brought him unto Iropagus, saying... May we know what this new doctrine whereof thou speakest is. May we know what, what is this thing that is new. We want to hear about it. And you tell people today what is new, they will listen. But they do not like the old time preaching. That's why when you teach new doctrine, they will listen to that and they will even do it. But God says, ask for the old ways. Ask for the old path. Because that is the way of God. And number three, first, will be the kind of preacher. The end time preachers. Number two, the end time Christians. Number three, the end time preachers that we have for the end time Christians. Listen. Verse number four, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth. Ito na they do not, they're not interested in the truth anymore and shall be turned unto fables. What are fables? These are stories that are not true, stories that are not biblical. What will happen in the last days? We are going to have end time Christians who would not want to hear the truth anymore, and there will be raise many preachers that will not preach the truth anymore. And these Christians who do not want to hear the truth will turn unto fables. And they will live a life that is never pleasing unto God anymore. Why? That is what they want. That is their characteristic. And God said, if that is what you want, that is what you are going to get. That's why we have the Kibulois, the Austins, the T, uh, T, uh, D. Jakes, and Joyce Mayers, and all of these kind of preachers. And even in our ranks, we have the A.B.s, and we have the, 
the uh, law, we have the, all of this. Why? Because people want to be entertained. They wanted to be lied to. And now God gave it to them. And in churches where the truth is being preached, some of the members will not even stay will not even endure even though the word of God is being preached. Why? Because they prefer to be lied to than to be preached the truth. So this is the end time preachers, the end time Christians, and the end time preaching. And if we want to be true to the word of God, we are going to preach nothing but the word of God. We will continue to reprove we will continue to rebuke. We will continue to exhort. We will do it with long suffering. We are going to do it with doctrine. We are going to be instant. And we will preach nothing but the word of God. So that in our lives, only God will be glorified. Amen. I hope and I pray that we are going to be different from the end time Christians that the Bible described. Let us ask for the old path. Let us go for the old way and let us stand there believing that God knows what He's doing and if we will follow Him, then we are going to be successful by the grace of God. Shall we stand up please?